Here comes the blitz. The coming clean. Alex Smith under heat. He's steamrolled at the 40-yard line. And Alex Smith is hurt. Uh, he's hurt bad, man. Look at him. Uh, he's in a lot of pain. You just never expect something like that's going to happen to you. It's my 13th year. I'd been tackled thousands of times. To look down and see your leg bending where it shouldn't, you know, and the realization that obviously <laughs> my leg was uh, pretty severely broken. There was no aspirations to play pro football. Like I was just loving being a student athlete. It seemed like overnight, I'm going back to New York for the Heisman Trophy and all of a sudden, a few months later, I hear my name called, you know, first at the NFL draft. 49ers select Alex Smith, quarterback, Utah. And everything changed overnight for me. It was a compound fracture. So the doctors went in immediately and I woke up you know, the great news. Bone looked really well aligned. Uh, I needed to stay a couple days uh, for observation before I could get discharged, but you know, everything seemed to be a success. Obviously, life changed for me a couple days later. When the infection set in, you know, I went into septic shock. Uh, potential amputation, you know, that, that I almost died. At that point, that's when I, I got introduced to Dr. Meehan. He was, the, he was the doctor explaining that maybe he could save my leg. I remember during the surgery and I had my whole team, including my co-surgeons there, Dr. Mabin Singh and Dr. Earl Johnson. And I remember talking to my partners and saying, listen, I have an acceptable vessel here for a target. We can, we can keep going here. So that was a real turning point for me in the surgery that we had a real good shot of making this work in that we were covering the bone in the hardware and, and he would potentially keep his leg. You know, certainly playing tackle football again. That, that, that was completely out of the question. I mean, I, at this point, I'm, I'm thinking about my kids. I'm thinking about being a dad. And I'm really struggling with the things I'll never be able to do with my kids, with my, my wife. I got made aware of what's called uh, the Secretary of Defense designation. And it was for civilians uh, that had what was deemed warlike injuries. And they could potentially get access to military care, even though they were civilians. You know, down there, there were you know, amputees and um, servicemen and women that had much more severe injuries than mine. And, you know, they're, they're moving forward with their life. A really a big contrast from where I was at mentally, seeing all these amazing examples of bravery and courage. And uh, it was eye-opening for me. You know, I'm saying out loud that I want to go see if I can play football again. And I just, I was scared to death when I said it. But really the example that they set down there really, you know, for me, I wasn't scared to try. The final step, in a lot of ways, was you know the hardest. It was in, I was on you know national TV in front of a lot of people. I hadn't been tackled. The last time I'd been tackled was two years earlier, and my leg shattered. Three plays later, I get tackled. I got sacked. You know, I go down, and for me, kind of a culmination of almost two years in the making. You know, I thought I would, I thought I'd be fragile forever. He is definitely a model for all lower extremity reconstruction patients, and all people everywhere who are going reconstruction in that your mindset is such an important part of how much you recover. For a lot of people, they have a hard time understanding why I would ever want to play football again, uh, myself included, right? It would seem crazy. And uh, for me, the mental freedom that I feel like I have for the rest of my life with my kids, my wife, my friends, my family to move forward and not feel like I'm fragile, um, that I can figure out a way, I can adapt. I'm so grateful for that.